Howdy guys, Kirk and family here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to do is, the folks here from the PTA called me and said, Kirk, we need to smooth this wall out because we're going to um, apply a finish for a chalkboard so the kids could uh, come over here and draw on. And they, we originally were going to do a little, little portion within this. And, and I said, well, why not do the whole wall? Because believe me, I've raised five kids and if you have a bunch of chalk, they're going to be pushing and uh, scratching each other's eyeballs out to get a little area to go ahead and play on. So he said, well, it's not within the budget. I said, if it's for the school, it's a worthy cause. I'll bring my family out and we'll take it from corner to corner this way. There's plenty of room for all the kids. Uh, in fact, when I left the house this morning, I stepped over a bunch of chalk that the kids were writing on the ground. So anyway, what we're going to do here is we are going to pressure wash this. And fortunately, there's no lead in this paint because the school district doesn't mess around. It's only a three month old paint job. So we still got to get smudge marks off grease or whatever this was and prep this. We're going to then apply a bonding agent to this wall. We're going to cover it and myself and my family are going to uh, go ahead and apply it. Here's my experienced workforce over here. That's my lot right there. Uh, they'll apply it and I'll spread it out and then we'll hard rubber float it to give it the smoothest finish possible. They look like they're ready to start working so we're going to get busy and pressure wash this and we'll show you how we apply it over this. And one last thing guys, the fellas here said hey we got cinder block. This is not cinder block. This is form boards and it's poured concrete. How do I know? Because I can see the lines with a heavy dash painted finish. So anyway, as we get ready to uh, apply this, we'll show you how we do it. All right, guys, we're doing the fun stuff, the bonding agent. So we're putting the bonding agent. The most important on the bonding agent is make certain you get around the edges because the edges are what would peel off first. All right, guys, I want to introduce you to Mike and Bradley. This is Mike. This is Bradley. These are the fellows responsible for donating all their time to the PTA to hire guys like me, make sure we do our project right. So, Thanks, just guys. appreciate it, Kurt. Yep. Appreciate the hard work. Mud! That's what we used to say at Union when the guys took too long to bring us mud. Come on, boy. Fill us up. I just sit here. Heck, I can go sit in my truck and these guys know how to do this already. Fill it up, fill it up. Okay. You guys might think, how thick do we need to go? Half inch. And guys, all we're, we're just using regular premium. Premium cement mixed with sand. We buy the sand and we mix it with the sand that's on the truck. This is not pre-mixed stuff like you get at, say, um, Home Depot or Lowe's. That product would work. What I'll generally do is, we all work together, so Jay, Jay's getting started with uh, Dan. Hey Jay, you can come spread with me. Now Dan should be able to keep up because we have a full mixer. And what basically I'm doing is, I want these guys to put it on fat and ugly. Once we apply this material, keep going. Keep filling these boards. Once we apply, this, I have about a half hour to darby it. That means make everything true and plumb. Over here, Jay. I saw the bottoms, you hit the top. Okay. What I like about these guys, they do the stuff I don't want to do, the low stuff. How's it going? Go. All right. It can be a lesson beforehand. I think I've got more on the floor. 
Oh, that's okay, baby. That's all right. You make me look so easy. Because I'm a professional. Really? I'm supposed to make it look easy. It's hard to get it on. Well, my English wife, she's only been doing this for a little bit. <laughs> now, Carl, Madeline, Jay, Dan, these guys have been doing this with me for a long time. Madeline is on school. She works for the school, the Parks District in Alameda, uh, teaching little kids about the ecology because she is studying marine biology and she's on holiday right now with um, school being out she's studying marine biology she agreed to come out here and give us a chance give us a hand because of uh, the consequences working with or the circumstances working with the school what a noble cause as soon as I spread this out, I'll go ahead and Darby this area. Hey, baby. That's it, baby. You do whatever you can. That's for you beginners. If your arms get tired of plastering, then you do something else. Bad and ugly guys, bad and ugly. Don't make it pretty. And what I generally do folks is we put it on. And by that I mean fat and ugly. That way if it's hot and skinny, then man, when I get ready to derby it, it sure makes my job hard. Fat and ugly. I'll show you why. Oh, if you're still watching this after all this time, give me another. 30 seconds, and I'll show you how we Darby it all. There you go, baby. Not and ugly. I'd rather have too much than not enough, because if I have too much, I move it to an area that needs more. I'll show you in a second now. I'm grab my dog. Okay, guys. Give me that pool trowel. Oh, uh, got Jason's good. What I'm doing, guys, is getting ready to rot it or Darby. We go fat and ugly. That way I can take the excess and put it where I need it. For, for example, we take it. We come here. Come here. And I look at the wall. Where do I need mud? Oh, I can use a little bit down here. Have too much to do union forever, day after day after day, month after month. They would blow it up with a pump, all of that pump. All right, 
You guys got the idea. If you ever want to do a playground, if you ever want to do a playground, turn it into a chalkboard. All these steps are necessary. So we're going to take the whole wall. We're almost done. Then we're going to take about an hour break. Let this set. Then I'm a hard rubber floated. Make it as smooth as possible. So when they apply their chalkboard finish, now I'm not certain how that's going to go. If they're going to paint it on, hand apply it like us, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We're not actually doing that. The PTA members are. Okay, guys, we are done with the skim coat. Now, skim coat, all I had to go was enough to cover all the block lines. We're going to let this set for a half hour. Madeline's got a real job she's got to get to. And my wife is going to leave too and go home. And thanks, guys. Jason and I are going to stay here and watch this dry and float it out. We'll show you that part too. Okay, guys, Jason and I are putting our final touches on this wall. And what we are doing is because I darbied it, I left Darby lines in it to open it up. Now we've got to hard rubber floated. I got to get the Darby lines out, number one. And number two, I want to compact it and make it as flat as possible. This is the way to make it as flat as possible. And you folks, little tips are just take it float up here, get that stuff out. If you got any holes like this, you can just use your finger, push it in and remove all that stucco out of there. You don't want the drains clogged. And with this particular project, it's been quite amusing. I had a little fellow come up to me and say, Mister, can I play in the sand, the back of your truck, play with the sand? And I thought, get out of here, kid. No, you can't. It's too dangerous. Then he asked me, how much longer are you going to be here? And the way he asked me that, I thought, how much longer am I going to be here? It reminded me when my kids were younger and Jackie and I would go on away for a weekend. They'd say, hey, how long are you going to be gone? You need me to carry your bags outside? And I think, uh-oh, party time. I guess that's what these little fellows are thinking as soon as we leave. But that's not on us. We're just doing our job and somebody else got to watch this wall. Today, what we're going to show you guys is how to smooth out a wall as smooth as you can get it. About, say, um, a month and a half ago, we were here. And we're at a school and they asked me, Chief Kirk, can you get... Uh, the concrete lines off and the dash finish. And we said, no problem. We did that. And this, the folks that, uh, the PTA members, are, were under the impression that as long as you can put a coat of cement over it, you can skim coat it with a chalkboard material, even this asphalt. They thought, well, gee, you can put it over the asphalt. Well, a couple months of research, and they found out if it's a little smoother, then it's a wee bit better. So they called me back and said, hey, Kurt, can you make it a little smoother? I said, absolutely. There's many different materials we can use, such as uh, their Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish, but I chose this one here. This is BMI Marble Finish. What does BMI Marble Finish mean? It's got a little bit of aggregate, a 30 mesh, and I'll show you how well it spreads. So we're, what we're going to do is we're all going to take this wall, all three of us, and we're going to start from the bottom, come up, come down on it and this is we're going to take the whole wall just like that and basically that will smooth it out when I come to my corner we just put a little bit on it and again folks this is just so that when they spread this chalkboard finish it spreads a little bit better because again through their research they have found out that the smoother the finish the better the chalkboard finish covers so we're taking it up coming down and again guys this is this is very similar to say Santa Barbara Smooth Mission finish where, where we put it on once and double it back over. We're taking it out of buckets and just straight up, come down on it, just like that. Of course, I'm working with 
Jason and Tim. Jay's also a licensed contractor, so is Tim. They've agreed to help us out because this is for a good cause. It's for the school. We're doing it uh, no cost, just as a favor to the school. A worthy cause. And up, come down. And up, come down. Piece of cake if you know how to do it, guys. When we get completely done, too, we'll, we'll try to give you a close-up of, uh, of the work. Up. Come down on it. This is plastering 101. You come straight up, straight down on it. Come up, straight down. Up. An idea, guys, if you're going to do this stuff, you want to take long strokes. You don't want to, you don't want to take a whole bunch of little strokes, like just a bunch of little stuff here. Otherwise, you'll be here all day. And you can, however, after you spread everything, come back and steel trowel it a little tighter if that's what you want. Come up. Come down. If you miss an area, not a big deal. This is the equivalent of taping mud inside. Although, taping mud has no sand in it. I, I will say this, you can only trowel down sand so smooth. So, I don't like to use the term glass, meaning, meaning we make our finishes smooth like glass because unless you work in interior, you can only smooth uh, exterior stucco down so smooth. So that glass terminology or the marble like on the bag. You can get it pretty tight, but there are limits to it. One more. And looks like we're about to have this guy lick. more. By the way too, I wet these walls down prior, otherwise as fast as we were applying it, it would suck up and dry. Then after you, oh you guys, you guys kick butt. Okay, now after after we got that done, I'm gonna take a float, or you can use a paintbrush, and you get your edges. Meaning, we just take it here and float these edges in, guys. That's all we do, we float these edges in. Tap out any excess mud. And remember guys, this is for a chalkboard finish. It doesn't have to be perfect, but from what their research has informed them of, it's gotta be a little tighter than what uh, regular stucco will do. Now, once you've got that on it, you can come back and steel trowel. it. You can do two coats if you wish, but you see that? Now this is becoming a lot tighter, guys.
Beautiful guys, beautiful. Well, we got that licked. Anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up and we'll show you a final conclusion of it when we got this paper and all of this uh, picked up. Okay guys, we spared you the second coat because it's the same as the first. The second coat gets all the chatter marks out and what we do is after that spread, we come and we lightly hit it. I could walk the entire length or just stay right here. Now if you, if you look at it, it's very similar to Santa Barbara Smooth Mission Finish. It's, it's the Marble BMI product. By the way, Jerry Pozo, how you doing? Jerry Pozo is the tech specialist for all the BMI products in the Bay Area or the regional. Uh, I want to thank Tim for uh, donating your time with me and Jay. I'm donating my time? Uh, I'm kidding, man. I'm donating our time. Oh. But anyway, guys, this is for the school. So, yes, well, I'm, I'm doing this as a freebie for them. Jason and I is uh, helping these guys. It's for a worthy cause for the kids. So they don't have to bend down because they've they still got great backs unlike us. They don't want to be painting all their chalkboard, all their crayons all over this asphalt finish. They want to be standing up painting and drawing pictures. I know I would be. Today we are at an elementary school in the Piedmont area and we are applying a chalkboard paint. That way the little kids don't have to hurt their backs and write on this asphalt. They can write right on the wall. Here's what we started off with. We started off with a heavy dash finish and a concrete wall, except this wall was a lot worse. It had form boards all through it. And what we did is we did the skim coat and uh, we made it what we thought was smooth and what the school thought was smooth. They did a little research. They came back a month later and said, hey, Kirk, can you make it a little bit smoother because uh, we thought that it would be smooth enough, but now that we're reading up on the subject, they wanted a wee bit smoother. So we came back and we put um, a smooth finish over that. And so with cooperation with Troy Aman uh, in Trends, they do a lot of uh, how-to videos. And with a little bit of cooperation from Porter Paints, which uh, in Trends or Troy, uh, talked to them and they donated the paint for this worthy cause just as we are volunteering our time to do the wall. Um, my wife, Jackie, my son, Jason, on the uh, uh, camera. And this is what Porter Paints is all about. I don't know if you guys can see these colors. Uh, they have blues, orange, uh, yellows, reds, greens for a chalkboard. I think it's kind of cool myself. I would need something like this where I don't have to bend down if I'm writing uh, kids. Oh, they're going to have fun on it. Let me tell you a little bit about, uh, I just read this a little while ago, and I could see that uh, this Porter Paints, it was uh, in Aus Australia Bay, Sydney, 30 years ago. Now they're coming to the United States. Well, they've been here about 15 years, and they ship this paint all over the world. I got this in the mail uh, just the other day, and they said, hey, gee, Kirk, where are the cause? Uh, you and Troy, we'll chip it in. Uh, so we are applying it. One thing I did read on here, they have a... Um, uh, it's uh, it's uh, environmentally free. We're trying to use a lot of products that are environmentally free too. It says no odors. Uh, if you have um, any problems with asthma, allergic reactions, this is supposed to be odorless and uh, just real good for you. It has um, uh, no, VOCs. no VOCs. What is a VOC? She... <laughs> a volatile organic compound. It's emitted from plastics and paints. It's bad for the environment, bad for your health. Oh, she's a, she's a biochemist. Uh, me, I'm just an applicator. I don't know these complicated things. Anyway, um, they've researched it. They took the research away from me because I don't want it. So if they come up with this um, paint right here, then I'd recommend it also. Again, that's uh, Porter Paints. Comes just like that from Australia. The land down under. Anyway, well, I'm going to get busy, and I'm going to, uh, we're just going to paint this out. This, the, the fellows again from the PTA, they've already uh, applied uh, their primer. So this is the last stage before a chalkboard finish. Um, this looks like it's going on pretty easy. And I'll tell you, you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to do this, guys. Uh, 
I've never done it, but we've all painted houses before. Similar thing, just like painting a house, you're painting a wall. Doesn't get much simpler than this. And that way, the little itty bitty kids will not have to bend down. And yeah, Troy, Troy all man, uh, I thank you for getting this stuff for us. I remember Troy's name because my granddaughter's three. And every time I see her coming, I go, oh man, here comes trouble. So she actually thinks that's my name. And so she will tell my wife, she says, where's all man? <laughs> that's how I remember your name, Troy. Troy all man. Anyhow, you can see, guys, that if you're going to do this, uh, you got to prep a wall first. And they say that you can put this over wood, um, sheetrock, painted surfaces, all kind of different finishes. So I would say um, if you're researching it, do your research and find out what you can apply it on and what you can't. In fact, I'm not even sure um, if it's going to take two coats. What is it, Jay? Um, after two hours, we can apply the next coat. And then after two days, it'll be dry and ready to be used as a chalkboard. Oh, I knew he would know because he read the can. One of us has to read the instructions. Well. Never read the instructions. <laughs> Yep, 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 you got that right, baby. <laughs> Instructions? Yeah. Well, I'm so used to all my cements that I know how to apply them. I mean, what's... Uh, stucco is not like computers. They don't change that often. But as far as uh, this paint, man, it's hard to read instructions on painting when you just take it for granted. Who hasn't painted a wall? So they sent us enough, they say, for two coats. What we're doing is one coat. Because we're not going to be here in two hours to do another coat. But that's where the PTA members come in. Uh, they got Bradley and Mike who set this all up. Uh, Bradley came over here. And over the weekend, prime this wall. What a guy. So anyhow, guys, you get the idea. Uh, Porter Paints is where you get this product. We are working on the school ground. And you see just how easy it is to apply this. Anybody can do it. Hell, if we can do it, you guys can do it. My name is Kirk. I am with Kirk Giordano Plastering, my lovely wife Jackie, and of course, Jason, my son. We thank you folks for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.